Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is modify. Modify. Looking at Easter coming up this weekend and um, as we're looking ahead to that in the book of Mark this week. And, uh, you know, just to think about how the disciples must have felt all that time they had spent with Jesus and and to now whether or not they even really understood what was about to happen. I really don't think they did. I, I, I think by their actions and what they do, I think that they were uh, they would have been like many of us. It, it just seemed unreal. But see, with that word modify, it's something that all along Jesus had been doing and they didn't realize it. He was modifying their way of thinking. He was changing their thought process, changing their hearts, changing their mindset, th- changing their attitudes towards God, towards towards Jesus, towards each other. And even to what even looking back, changing their attitude towards the, the Old Testament and, and what the law originally was written for and what it was pointing to. Change their their mentality as they thought about the prophets and even how they interpreted scripture because of Jesus' presence. It, it changed everything. The cross changed everything. But even more than that, the empty tomb changed everything. Because if Jesus had just died, that would have been it. That would have been the end of the story. But because he lives, so can you and I. And and here, I think at the Last Supper, as we're going to look at tonight, or today rather, uh, just to just to look at these verses, to think about the, the behavior and the attitudes that Jesus was modifying, even in his example, as he washed the disciples' feet, and then he instituted the Lord's Supper. So today, Mark chapter 14, looking at verses 22 through 26, says, And they as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it. And gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, this very familiar to any of us that have participated in the Lord's Supper uh, or communion, as we call it a lot of times, it, that was instituted here at the Last Supper. But even more than that, before that, it was the attitude of sacrifice. It was him modifying their thinking as to uh, who should be washing feet. That's one of the reasons that Jesus actually got down and washed the disciples' feet. It wasn't because no one else could do it. He was showing them that he was not, you know, a servant is not above his master. And 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 even as that is, he was serving God the Father. He was showing that he was willing to serve. So why wouldn't we be willing to serve? Why wouldn't the disciples be willing to serve? And see, a lot of people will take that literally and say, okay, well, it was about washing feet. But it's so much more than that. I mean, at that time, yeah, it, it was something that needed to be done because of the, the shoes they had, the dusty conditions they were in, and, and really, I mean, just taking care of your feet the same way that you would try to take care of your feet today. But if you think about it, the whole point is so much more than that. It was doing a task that maybe some thought only servants should do, that only those, you know, they have the attitude of people that were beneath us. But Jesus says, no, you don't understand. We're all to be servants. And if God himself, right, in Jesus Christ, if, if he could step out of heaven, I and mean, this is, oh, this is Philippians 2 and the, the mind of Christ. If he saw that, you know, everything that he needed to do and to accomplish on earth, and he was willing to lay down uh, his royalty, lay down and kind of, uh, I guess, maybe even just shield, if we want to say that, his 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 God, his can't say his godly character, but all of his sovereign power, you know, he shielded some of that. We couldn't see all of his glory because he was fully God and fully man. And as hard as that is for us to imagine, we can still believe it because it's true. But as he came, God himself stepped out and said he was willing to serve. So are we willing to serve? Were the disciples willing to serve? Yes, they were. Because after this, we see that they are radically changed. Now, it took a little time, 
It took the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It took the understanding of realizing what the empty tomb meant. But isn't that the same way with us today? God has called us to serve. But you first must understand. First, you must have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Then you must really understand what it means to have the empty tomb. What it means that Jesus died on the cross. As we talk about and celebrate Easter, if you don't understand why Jesus had to go to the cross, then you don't understand salvation. And you don't understand the, the necessity of salvation. You don't understand the necessity of the blood. And the problem with that is if you don't understand the need of a savior, then you will die lost in your sin and spend an eternity in hell. But Jesus came so that you could modify your destination. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, let this be my, my earnest plea to you. Please reach out to me, to another believer. We would, we would be glad. We would be thrilled to tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. Now, if you watch this and you know him as your personal Savior, but you have a friend that doesn't, then by all means, just share this video. Get them to the, to the gospel message where all they need to do is A, admit that they're a sinner. Then B, believe in Jesus Christ and all the work of uh, the gospel that we have seen. And then to C, confess him as Lord. To mean that they're no longer, and you're no longer Lord of your life, but that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Because he's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. So let him modify you today. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.